So we're continuing our series today called Restful, Living Restful in a Restless World. Last week, we talked about our core value of healing, how God uh, God doesn't want to hurt you. God actually wants to heal you. And we talked so much last week about the love that God has for us. So I want you to think for just a moment, how did you experience the love of God in this past week? What was a tangible way? It may have been in your daily devotional time through the word that God spoke to you and you just sensed his love. It may have been through a relational interaction, something at work. I, I don't know. What was it that, that you say, man, God, this is where I sensed and felt God's love this week. I want you to turn. I want you to share that with somebody wherever you're gathered. Take a moment. Share. So as we continue our series, if you are brand new to our gathering, we are talking about our four core values. We do this every year at this time. And you just came at a great time. You're watching right now. You're going to find out who we are as a church, and it really boils down to our four core values. This is what we're all about. Hope for the heart, healing for the soul, peace of mind, and purpose in the world. And we don't just get those four just at random. We didn't make them up or think, man, those are really good. Let's do that. We actually got them from Scripture, from Jesus, the great commandments where they asked Jesus, hey, what is it we should be doing? And if you wonder, what is life all about? It boils down to this. This is what Jesus said. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And oh yeah, second is pretty important as well. You need to love your neighbor as yourself. That's where we get our mission as a church. It's something we say every week. We exist to help people find the hope, the healing, the peace, and the purpose of Jesus. That's why we are here. And so today, we are on our third core value. We're going to talk about peace today. And if you have a Bible, I want you to go to Psalm chapter 4. Psalm chapter 4. The title of my message today is Rest Full of Peace. Peace. If you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to download version. It's a great app. And when, if you're on the Bible app, I read out of the New Living Translation, so you're looking for the NLT. So David wrote a lot of the Psalms, not all of them, but many of them. And Psalm chapter 4, most scholars, and it's, it is debated, but most scholars think that David probably wrote this Psalm as a response to the time that he was on the run from his son Absalom. It's crazy to think about this, but David had a son who turned on him. <laughs> maybe you've had a son, maybe a toddler that's turned on you. Well, Absalom's a lot older. He's a really good looking guy. People really like him a lot. And he manages to rally the nation of Israel around him. He does this coup attempt. It's successful, and, he, and David has to flee for his life, and, and he's being hunted down. Absalom wants to kill his dad. It's crazy, but that's what was happening. So you can imagine David in this moment, not a lot of peace in his life. And so he wrote this psalm, and I really think it speaks for all of us. And uh, let's, let's look at it together. He says this, Answer me when I call to you, O God, who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? That's obviously in response to the people that are coming up against him. He says this, don't sin by letting anger control you. It's almost like he's talking to his son there. Think about it overnight, remain silent. Offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord. It's like a cry he's giving out even to his own son. Many people say, who will show us better times? Let your face smile on us, Lord. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvest of grain and new wine. I love it. Right in the middle of no peace, chaos, he's fleeing for his life. And in that moment, David finds a way to praise God. That is just preach in itself right there. And then he says this, the last verse of the psalm. This is actually one I've been saying every night before I go to bed. In peace, I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. So today, I, I want to talk to you about resting full of peace. Father, in this moment that we have together, across the city, across uh, maybe the nation and states and even countries right now, we ask that your spirit would be present in every gathering. And would you speak deeply into our souls today in Jesus' name. And wherever you are, come on, somebody say amen. Well... Right now, we are all experiencing a lot of stress, a lot of tension, 
I mean, people are really on edge right now. And, and we, we all have our breaking point, don't we? I mean, maybe you've already had your breaking point. I, I know I experienced my breaking point four weeks ago. So as most of you know, four weeks ago, my father-in-law, Russell Larson, 91, uh, went to be with Jesus. He was at the Veterans Center in Claremore. Uh, I've shared this story already, but for those of you that are new, uh, he had been at the Veterans Center uh, for a couple of years, and for five months, my mother-in-law wasn't able to go in there because they weren't letting anybody come, come see the veterans there because of COVID. And then he was in the final hours of his life. And God did this incredible miracle like I have few I've seen in my life. On her birthday, the Veterans Center called and said, hey, we want you to come and have time with Russell. So we jumped in our car, went to the Veterans Center. We were there all day sitting by his bedside. It was honestly very, very beautiful. Brutal is what I call it. Brutal and beautiful at the same time. We, we sang songs over him. We, we prayed over him read scripture over him, shared memories together. And, but, but to be honest, it was a very, very exhausting day. If you've ever been there, all day. We didn't leave till almost 11 o'clock that night. Honestly, because we didn't want to. Because we knew this was probably going to be the last time we saw him. So we left and we were just completely exhausted and went home and Finally got to bed around 1, and, and uh, my phone rang at 6 a.m., and it was the Veterans Center, and, and they told me that uh, Russ had passed. So I woke up Laura and told her the news, and uh, we went downstairs because my mother-in-law lives with us, and I went down and uh, went into her room, sat on her bed, and we just kind of sat in silence, to be honest with you. Just It was... Um, it was hard. And the crazy thing, though, was that <laughs> two hours later, I had to get in my truck and drive to Dallas. And it's because I was performing the wedding of Jim Bowie. Some of you know Jim Bowie. He grew up pretty much in this church. And Jim's kind of been like a son to me. He doesn't have a dad. And he was getting married. And there's no way I was going to miss that. But yet here I was with this wrestling. And my father-in-law's just passed. I got to leave my mother-in-law and my wife, who and, and, and who are grieving, and I got to drive to Dallas, and, and I was just conflicted, but I knew I needed to go, and they gave me um, their uh, blessing to go, and so I got in my truck, and, and I began this drive to Dallas. Now, anybody who's ever been to Dallas, you know you go down Highway 75, and when you go down Highway 75, you go through small town after small town after small town, and there's always a greeting party waiting on you in every one of these small towns. You know what I'm talking about? It's like a little ticker tape parade with the little red lights and things like that. You got to be careful because they are speed trap after speed trap after speed trap. I knew this. I've been done the tri drive plenty of times, and so I said to myself, Brad, you're overwhelmed emotionally. You're exhausted physically. You're mentally depleted. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. So, so every town, I slowed down. There it is. There's a sign. I'm slowing down and slowing down, slowing down. Except for that one time <laughs> when I was honestly just completely lost in my thoughts of what was taking place. And I, I, I look over and in the brush, there he is waiting on me, the greeting party for the city. Yes, the uh, police officer. I see him. I look down. I'm going 65. But the bad news was I look up and the sign says 45. I knew it was going to happen. He comes up behind me. Boo! Lights come on. I pull over to the side. As he's walking up to the vehicle, I'm frankly in this moment just overwhelmed. As he comes up to the window, I'm honestly, I'm physically just shaking. And he's kind of looking at me and I'm just, because I'm just so overwhelmed. And I'm thinking, Brad, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together, keep it together. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, license and insurance verification, please. And I said, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. And so I lean over uh, towards the glove box. And as I'm leaning towards the glove box, that's when it happens. That's when I had my moment and I broke. I mean, wept like a two-year-old. I was bawling uncontrollably. I just, all of my emotion came out in that moment and I just sat back and I'm just like trying to get it together and this police officer's looking at me like, okay, license and insurance, please, because he doesn't know what's happening. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. And I'm digging through the glove box, but I, I, 
At this point, I can't even, it's like I can't even read anymore. I don't even know what numbers mean. And I actually take everything out of the glove box. I dump it into the passenger seat and I'm hunting around for it. And I just sit back and I say, I'm sorry, sir. And he said, are you okay? And I said, no, I'm not. And I began to explain to him what I just told to you earlier and the events that had taken place. And then I began to look and I said, give me a second. And I found the card and I handed it to him. And he looked at my license and my insurance verification and he handed it back to me and he said, sir, I hope you have a better day. Whew. We all have our breaking point, don't we? I mean, some of us, we lash out in anger. Some of us, we cry. Some of us uh, withdraw from people. Some of us curl up in the fetal position and break down in front of the police. I mean, we all have different ways in which we have our breaking point. And David here in Psalm chapter four, he's at his breaking point, yet somehow he finds peace. Look at verse eight, go back to verse eight. He says, in peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Have, have you ever gone to bed stressed out and overwhelmed by a problem and then woken up at 3 a.m. in a complete panic? You're like, <gasps> How am I going to solve this? What am I going to do? It's never going to end. What is this going to happen? I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not, I, nobody's ever gone to bed stressed and overwhelmed, woke up at 3 a.m. and went, bling, problem solved. Now I'm going to rest in peace. No, none of us have ever had that happen. So is it possible to lie down and sleep in peace with all that's happening around us? I mean, we got a pandemic. We've got racial unrest. We've got uh, an election coming up, a crazy one at that, very volatile. We've got hurricanes, we've got fires, and then you've got your personal problems all on top of that. I've been reading a um, biography about Lewis and Clark. I was talking about this a couple of weeks ago, but Lewis and Clark, they kept journals on their journey uh, trying to find a passageway to the Pacific Northwest. And they faced overwhelming obstacles in their way, attacks from bears, they, um, they, there were people that came up against them, tried to kill them, uh, harsh winter elements, hail, snowstorms, uh, points where they had very few supplies left. And when you look in their journals over and over again, they just simply say this, we proceeded on. Bear attack, we proceeded on. Hail and winter storms and we proceeded on. I want you to write this down. If you're taking notes, I can press on in peace. I can press on in peace. This is what David did. He's hunted by his son, false accusations against him, yet he pressed on in peace. How? How was David able to do this? The answer is actually right there in verse 8. He looked to the author of peace. He said, for you alone, Lord, will keep me safe. So in this psalm, what David shows us is how to press on in peace through any struggle. Go back to verse one, the very start of the, of the psalm. He says this, answer me when I call to you, O God, who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Can I get an amen? Who does not want to be freed from their troubles? Come on, somebody, wherever you are, just say, yeah, hey, that's me right there. I would love to be freed from my troubles. Have mercy on me and say this with me, hear my prayer. Like when David was overwhelmed by fear and stress and worry, his first instinct was to pray. So write this down. I can press on in peace when I press through in prayer. I can press on in peace when I press through in prayer. What's crazy is we panic about the dumbest things sometimes, don't we? Like, have you ever lost your phone? Like, why do we panic over that? We're just like, oh, I can't find my phone. I, 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 life is over as I know it. I can't exist. I can't move. I can't drive my vehicle. I can't move forward. I don't know. What, and you make everybody else around you miserable because you can't find your phone. This happened to me the other day. I couldn't find my phone. I was, I was watching a video and, and this speaker said something really powerful. And it's like, I got to write that down. And I put everything in my phone because it's not just a phone, you know. And so I've got, where's my phone? I've got to write this down. Where is my phone? I don't want to forget this. And I look down. I'm watching the video on my phone. <laughs> so sometimes we panic over the dumbest things, but sometimes it's very real. Maybe it's a relational issue that you're facing in your marriage or in your family right now, or, or there's something at work that has you overwhelmed, or it's a health crisis or a financial crisis, or something that's happening on your campus with, with your 
uh, degree that you're working towards or towards the classes that you're in, and you're just completely overwhelmed by what's happening around you. Laura has this thing she does whenever I'm overwhelmed. She can see it in me, and she'll just do this. She puts out her hands, and when she does that, I'm like, I know what she's doing. She wants to pray, and I'm like, uh-uh. No, uh-uh, no, 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 because I don't know why, but I just want to hang on to it. I don't know why, but I'm like, no, I, 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 I have the right to just feel this way. And, I, and so, because I know, I know when I reach down and I grab a hold of her hand, it's over. Because she's going to pray, and every single time that she prays, the peace of God overwhelms me. But I... I want to hold on. You want to hold on. I think the reason we want to hold on is for some crazy reason, we think the more I think about it, the more I stew on this, somehow, some way, I'm going to find the answer. But can I tell you that you are looking down the wrong road? Like Laura and I, we live on Raleigh Place. Two blocks over is Raleigh Court. And whenever packages are delivered or people come to see us, sometimes they end up on Raleigh Court. And I can tell you, if you're on Raleigh Court, you can look as hard as you want, but you are never going to find our place. And the same thing is happening in our world right now. People are looking for peace in the wrong place. They are searching down the wrong road and they're never going to find it. So I want you to think for just a moment right now, what is it right now that is robbing you of peace? What's got you? Would you just stop for a moment? I want you just to share with somebody around you. What is it that's just robbing you of peace? Share that for a moment. So this is what prayer is. David tells us prayer is simply about trusting God. It's about trusting that he hears my prayers and trusting that he will free me from the trouble that is, that is facing me. This is one of our core practices. You're going to be hearing about this this week when you gather in your core groups. We have this core practice that helps us to be at peace, to live as people of peace. And this core practice is, write this down, persistent prayer. We got to be people of persistent prayer. In this world, most people are persistent worry, persistent stress, Permit, per, uh, persistent uh, fear, but God is calling us to be people of persistent prayer because persistent prayer leads to persistent peace. And prayer is foundational, as you know, to everything we do at Core Church. We do nothing without prayer. It's why we were talking about praying for people far from God. We want to pray for you. You can submit a prayer request right now, corechurch.com. We talk about it every week. Tell us your prayer. Don't go through it alone. Let people gather around you. We pray every day for every request that comes in for 30 days. We do core midweek once a month. We gather, we come together. Right now it's on Facebook Live, but we come together and we pray together. As a church, we just came through eight days of prayer and fasting. And I want to tell you, this week we are launching something we're calling Friday Fast. For the last 15 plus years, I have had a practice of fasting every single Friday. Uh, it's just been my practice, and, and those that know me and are close to me know that on Friday, you can't get a hold of me. Um, it better be an emergency. I'm just on plug because I'm going to fast in the morning. I'm going to get away with God, and I'm going to talk to him about this church. And I'm going to talk to him about where we've been. I'm going to talk to him about where we're, where we're going. And I just sense with what's happening in our world right now, why are we not all fasting and praying? So as a church, we're going to start doing this every Friday. I want to encourage you, fast a meal or fast uh, all day if you want to. And this could be for what's happening in our country, what's happening in our city, what's, what's happening in our, in our church and, and how God can help us, but also what's happening in your own life. And you're going to see a video devotional come out. You can get all the information at corechurch.com, but we're going to start fasting on Fridays because this is why. Prayer brings assurance, prayer brings confidence, and I can press through in Prayer. When I pray, I can press through in peace. So David's son Absalom is he's orchestrated this coup attempt and it's been successful. David's fleeing for his life and David says this, how long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? Like nothing can steal your peace faster than people, right? Yeah. Turn to somebody wherever you are and say, uh, it's not you. <laughs> it's not you, but people can steal. And COVID's not the only thing that people are panicking about. And it's not the only thing that's contagious. 
I tell you, the most contagious thing right now is panic. Like, if, talk to people, and they're like, 2020 is the worst year ever. I just can't wait for this year to be over. It's just been awful. Well, you know, I'm glad we hang out, hung out today. This was great. I'm so encouraged. But they, they can't find anything good. But as the people of God, we're like, no, I'm looking for the good. Where's God working? What is God doing? How, how are things working in my favor? We fight for that. And when David fled, listen to this, when David fled, he didn't flee alone. He had 600 men that were devoted to him and they fled with him. And ultimately, these were the men who helped him regain the throne. Write this down. Not only can I press, uh, press on in peace through prayer, but I can press on in peace when I press into God's people. I can press on in peace when I press into God's people. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Who are you listening to? Like who has, who has your ear? David says this in verse three, you can be sure of this. The Lord, say these two words with me, he what? Set apart. The Lord set apart the godly for himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. This world we know is a troubled place. There is bigotry, there is injustice, there is anger, there is violence, there is worry, there is stress, there is chaos, on and on and on. But the good news is, is if you are a child of God and you have been set apart, turn to somebody wherever you are and say, you have been set apart. You do not have to participate. You don't have to join in it. I was telling you about my, my mother-in-law, and she lives with us, and uh, she's never really been around dogs, and we have, um, well, we have a small pony. We have Otis. Otis is our Great Dane, and for some reason, he loves Evelyn, loves Evelyn. So he will follow her into her room, and then he'll lay down. The problem is, when Otis lays down, he, he takes up the whole floor, and so she can't move around in her room. He's also a Great Dane, and if you know Great Danes, they, they drool a lot. And so he will drool, and then he'll shake <laughs> like that. And it just goes, boom, 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 lands everywhere. So she decided, you know what, I'm done with this. And so when Otis would follow her and come behind her, she would just put up a baby gate. And Otis would walk up to the gate, and he'd just look over like, hey, we're buds, we're friends. Like, wait, I, we, we, why can't I come in? What, what, what's happening? I'll tell you what some of us need to do, and maybe you need to do. We need to set up a gate. You, you need to say, you are not allowed into my life. Some of those voices you're listening to, some of those people you're listening to, some of the news threads you're on, some of the social media sites that you're on, you need to shut them down and say, no, no, I, I have been set apart, and I am setting myself apart. I mean, we need to be with God's people. It's when we're with God's people that we ultimately experience peace. And this is one of our core practices. You're going to be learning about this in your core groups as you gather this week. Write this down. You need godly friendships. We all need godly friendships. This is why it's so important. And we tell you, man, get into a neighborhood gathering or get into a core group because you do not do life alone right now. Fight against isolation and say, I'm going to press into God's people because it's when you press into God's people that you find encouragement, you find strength, you find the support. You have people that will pray for you and encourage you. You have the right voices in your life and you are the right voice in someone else's life. Jesus said this in John 14, 27. I'm leaving you with a gift. Say this with me. Peace of mind and heart. We're going to move into a time of prayer and communion here in just a moment and we're going to worship together. But I think right now people everywhere are searching for peace. They're, they're trying to juggle it all. They're trying to carry it all. They're just trying to figure it out. It's like when I go to the store, if you ever go to the grocery store, this is what I do. I'll go in, I go, I just need milk. I need milk and Pop-Tarts. That's all I need. And sure enough, I go in, is it just milk and Pop-Tarts? No, because I go in and I'm like, oh, that's right. We needed garlic powder. And so I go get the garlic powder. Oh, wait, we needed paper towels. I got to get the paper towels. We needed a loaf of bread. We need a loaf of bread, and I get the loaf of bread, and oh yeah, that's right, we needed, we needed Tylenol. And next thing you know, you got your shirt full, you got your arms full, and you're trying to carry it all. That's what the world is doing right now, trying to carry it all. You've been set apart. You do not have to carry it all. Jesus wants to come in and carry it for you. And when you press into prayer, 
you press into God's people, you can press on in peace.